it's a pleasure here to be here with all of you, and uh, what I've seen so far makes me feel really proud because within this room, we've got the leaders of tomorrow, and I'm also privileged to be able to introduce the first delegate for this panel discussion. And what a great honor it is because Naomi comes from a great background. She's Czech, she's Japanese, but she's come through a lot of adversities. And from growing up in numerous locations, she went to Japan. And in Japan, she started to see that within the society of Japan, everything was stereotypical. Everything had to be homogeneous. And as a young girl, she wasn't looked at as being Japanese. She was looked at as being a foreigner. But she didn't really fit in as a foreigner either, because she didn't speak English. So growing up in that society and having been in Japan and seen that, I can relate to what she must have been through. And it was a call to action that led her in high school to create Kalmany, which is really an aspect of culture and harmony coming together to help educate young children on the importance of diversity, making sure that people understand diversity helps you improve culture, improve decisions that are made. And it's making sure that she combats discrimination. So she set up Kalmany, which helps to go and educate 5 to 12-year-olds. She's got 40 tutors, and all of this started while she was still at high school. She promotes the acceptance of diversity. She's done a great job, and it's my privilege to introduce her to the stage because she's making Japan a better place, a better society. Naomi Iwasani, please come on up. I am Japanese, and I hated myself. I hated myself for being different from others. So now I'm here, hoping to change the world to a place where all minorities can feel embraced. There was a horrific incident last year in Jerusalem when six people were stabbed in a hate crime attack at the Gay Pride Parade. We hear shocking news of LGBT people being attacked and killed in hate crimes all around the world. However, for those of us living in Japan, these extreme violence are hard to understand, almost to the point of being unimaginable. So, does this make Japan a country that truly embraces diversity? My answer, sadly, is no. Japan, I feel, is still a closed and intolerant country. Let me give you an example. A boy at one of the top universities in Japan committed suicide after experiencing severe bullying for being gay. Unfortunately, this is not an unusual case. 70% of the sexual minorities in Japan have experienced bullying in school, with 30% of those considered suicide. What Japan is facing is unconscious discrimination towards minorities. Is there any way we can eliminate this discrimination against minorities? I believe the answer all around the world is yes. And the ways to fight such prejudice will be different depending on local culture. There's a saying in Japan, the nail that sticks out gets hammered in, meaning that the best policy is to try to be the same as others or you could lose your job and lose your position in society. Kids are also instructed to be in schools to be the same as everyone else. In the health textbook distributed to school children, it clearly says when we grow up, we start to be interested in the opposite sex. No wonder people cannot feel confident in declaring themselves as LGBT. Kids don't have the chance to experience and celebrate diversity. I myself have also experienced the impact of unconscious discrimination, and I still do. Just because I don't look like a typical Japanese, I've experienced bullying in school. The classmates, sadly, had never had the chance to experience and meet different race. And were too scared to explore the differences. 
shutting out the minorities is the easiest solution. I've been trying to raise awareness to promote diversity. And when doing speeches at universities and on national TVs, I often ask the audience if they have ever met someone who is LGBT. And only one or two percent would raise their hands. This is why the key issue here is unconscious discrimination. And this unconscious discrimination comes from being unused to people who are different. And so the stereotypes go unchallenged. I also founded a column Kalmoni, a company for Japanese children to experience diversity and chance to explore the fascinating differences in the society. We run an after-school program and tutoring service where children can meet and have fun with people of different nationality and races. They enjoy spending time with people who have disabilities and people who are LGBTs. The Kalmoni curriculum enables them to learn how to respect and live with diversity through fun activities and role-playing. Over 600 children have been to workshops, and the aim is to educate the next generation of leaders in society who will both protect and celebrate diversity. It has been a difficult journey for some of them. I remember one eight-year-old girl who cried and ran away when a black teacher from Haiti showed up. There can be a similar lack of confidence when they meet people from an LGBT background. But this little girl, she wasn't trying to discriminate. She was just scared. After an hour, she had become good friends with the Haitian teacher. And this is the magic of children. <laughs> we all have fears. Humans are creatures who struggle with unexpected, the unfamiliar, then unknown. Our human nature does not welcome difference. However, I believe we humans can build a society that truly embraces diversity. If we can change the unfamiliar to the familiar, if we can change the courage to seeing differences, and if we can explore the beauty of diversity, then I believe we can overcome our weakness of this fear. With all my love and respect for Japan and to one young world, thank you.